So here's my simple question. Why won't a free market approach to housing finance bring prosperity and make housing more affordable? Here now we have former secretary of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, Henry Cisneros, and we have Mark Calabria, director of financial regulation studies at the Cato Institute. Okay, Henry, it's good to see you again. Larry? Why won't get government out? Why wouldn't that make it more affordable? This thing is such a mess now. Since the end of World War II, the government has played a very important role through, a, through FHA and Fannie and Freddie. Uh, in keeping the American housing market strong. We've had a bad period. It wasn't the government's fault alone. Uh, it, when history, when, when, the, when the record is written on this period, we're going to see the role that Wall Street played and the rating agencies played and rogue uh, uh, people out there selling retail mortgages, predatory, abusive, all, all the pieces are going to come together. No government blame? It, the no go government no, no, blame? No, the government has a part in it, no question about it, including Fannie and Freddie. But to take the government completely out of the housing markets is a completely different model of doing business. We've never been there before, and I think the result would be a depressed housing market. It is too, part, too important a part of GDP, something like 20% when you put in housing finance and materials and transportation and accessories and appliances and all of it are part of the American housing picture, we don't want to fool with that for the long run. All right, Mark Calabria, you heard Mr. Cisneros, Secretary Cisneros. He's making the pitch for governments. What's your pitch? Well, I certainly agree that there were lots of players involved that were at fault, not just government, but government played a very big role. Part of the problem is a sort of schizophrenia, in my opinion, because we want housing to be more affordable, but we design a number of programs that push prices up, which makes it more expensive. If you get government out of it, prices will start to come down. We need to accept that housing should not be a speculative invested. It should be basic necessity. It's shelter. And if you get money of the government involvement out, yes, prices will come down. But a depressed housing market is a market that's more affordable. And that should be the other line goal here. Secretary is how do we make uh, listen to what Mark is saying. I mean, I look, hear Mark. Uh, the post World War II housing boom, Fannie and Freddie were only a small, small. Actually, FHA was a big actually, part. Actually, VA was a big part. Yes, but they just insured loans. They right. didn't run 90% of the market. And what I'm asking you, right. when has government running an industrial sector of the economy ever I worked don't think in the it U.S. Should. or Europe or the Soviet Union? I don't think it should. And I think the private sector needs to play a larger part. And we do need private mortgage insurers. Fannie and Freddie overstepped their bounds, ah. and Fannie and Freddie need to be reined in. All right, so no how do we do it. that? That's well, the key point. Well, some of the proposals the administration is going to put on the table, like forcing them to raise their fees so that private mortgage uh, uh, insurers can compete, for example, uh, things like uh, lower maximum loan limits mm -hmm. so that they are in the portion of the market where they need to be and not in the jumbo and, and other parts of the market, uh, increasing down payment, for example. Ah, this is my not favorite. Not to 20%. I want 20%. I high. have never bought a property where I didn't have to put 20% down. I think it's 20 too high. 20% is the answer to credit. It's too high. Too we high. Can do, we can do, we can function in, in, in a substantially lower level than that and keep more Americans in the housing and, markets. And Home ownership in this country is a key to the middle class. Well, we can't, we can't shrink the middle class at a time right, with a lot of other things. Mark Calabria, we, don't, I'm sorry, let me pose it as a question. Do we subsidize housing too much? Aren't we directing resources? Aren't we engaged in social central planning by doing this? We, we very much are, and I think this is an important point to be made. I mean, we've seen wage stagnation over the last decade, and I think one of the drivers of this is if you want to see wages, you want to see incomes increase, you have to increase capital deepening, you have to increase productivity. That's what drives wages. We've put money into basically bidding up housing prices, which doesn't increase productivity, doesn't increase wages. I mean, I think housing's a great thing. I think everybody needs a place to live. But at the end of the day, bidding up asset prices does not really make us richer as a country. I mean, Henry, it's a form of industrial policy and plan. I mean, why don't we subsidize uh, manufacturing, transportation, computers, broadcasters, and television? I mean, that's where your argument leads, and well, I think that's not right. Well, it's more than industrial policy. It's sort of s the, the, the society itself. Uh, what, what, what we know is that that what creates a middle class is access to higher education, decent wages, and 
access to home ownership. It's been an important part of this. Now, home ownership got too high. So not subsidy. I mean, you and Jack Kemp yes, banded it. together to create ownership and opportunity, and I have always mm -hmm. loved that and given you enormous credit for crossing the aisle. But what I'm saying is, why must we, the taxpayers, subsidize it when the outcome has been so bad? Well, let's not take the wrong lesson from this episode. And there are lots of lessons to be learned, but it is not that government ought to be completely out of the housing sector. It has played an important part. Housing is critical to the national economy. It's critical to our social stability because home ownership really does matter. And we don't want to end that now at a time when we need to be bringing uh, new populations, immigrants and minorities, into home ownership, into the middle class, into a stake in the American dream. Be very, very careful going down that right, road. But Mark Calabria, what is the right lesson to learn regarding government's involvement in housing after this debacle? Well, one, we should learn that the federal taxpayers should not be bearing the risk of all the housing market. I mean, we're transferring all this risk from lenders, from Freddie and Fannie, onto the taxpayer. And a lot of it didn't even increase home ownership that much. If you look from 1968, when Fannie was privatized till 1996, the home ownership rate increased 1%. Mm. So even if we believe that home ownership is the ultimate objective here, is what we're doing effective? I'm not quite convinced that it is. We can have widespread home ownership. We know in Canada they have a home ownership right. rate higher than ours. And they don't do it. They, they don't, don't behave this way. All right, I got to leave it there. Henry Cisneros, Secretary Hub, thank you very much. Mark Calabria, Cato, thank you.